Good day everybody. In this class we will be learning how to apply the Stewart's theorem. Now if you remember in the previous class I had literally derived the formula to find the length of the median. Right? But in this case we are going to be deriving a formula to find the length of the line segment which is actually drawn from the vertex. So we got a triangle in this fashion and let me take this as A, B and C. Now this is a line segment. It is not a median. It is a line segment drawn from a vertex to the opposite side. So let me take this point as some D. And we would be interested in finding the length of this line segment. So there is a distinction between the previous uh, problem and this problem. In the previous problem, AD was the median, but in this case AD is not the median, it's just a line segment, right? And D is not the midpoint. D is a point on BC. So having mentioned that, let me explain to you how the Stewart's theorem is deducted or how the Stewart's theorem is derived. So we got a triangle. I'm going to take the side, this entire side to be as A units, this is B units, this is C units. Now let the line segment make an angle of alpha. Right? So this is alpha. Now having got that, we would also like to take the division or the distance BD to be equal to say sum M and DC to be equal to sum N. So this distance is going to be sum M, this distance is going to be sum N. So what we will do is we will apply the cosine cosine law. Now what does cosine law say? You have this angle and once you get this angle and you know this side and this side then you can easily obtain the relationship between now what I wish to do is I would like to take let AD be taken to be a sum D right sum D so this line segment is taken to be a, a sum D so let me just place that D there so the side opposite to this angle alpha we start with that so that is how the cosine angle is applied so c squared is equal to m squared plus d squared and then negative 2 times m into d times cos alpha so that is for triangle one triangle for this triangle now we will also apply the cosine angle for this triangle. So what I wish to do is I would like to take this angle to be a sum beta. Now alpha plus beta is 180 degrees and since alpha plus beta is 180 degree if alpha is say 45 degree beta will be 180 minus 45 that would be 135 degrees right 10 1 180 okay that's fine so from here if I were to take cos of 45 degrees that's cos of alpha and then if I were to add it with cos beta so in this case cos of 45 degrees added with cos of 135 degree. Now what is cos 45? Cos 45 is 1 over root 2. Now do you know what is cos 135? Cos 135 is negative 1 over root 2. So this is going to be equal to 0. So this is a beautiful relationship that we have obtained. Cos alpha plus cos beta is equal to 0 when alpha plus beta is equal to 180 degrees. So this is a very important property that we will be utilizing. Alright, so if I were to take this as 2, I would be bringing this 2 later on. So I applied cos cosine law, applying 
applying cosine law to triangle ABD. Now applying cosine law to triangle ADC. So this one is beta, right? So take this side that's going to be b squared is equal to this is n squared this is d squared negative 2 times n into d into cos of beta now from 2 what do you get cos of alpha plus cos of beta is equal to 0 this means cos of alpha is negative cos beta if I were to take this as 3 take this as 4 therefore I can rewrite 4 to be as b squared is equal to n squared plus d squared negative 2 times n into d into now what I wish to do is I would like to make the substitution for cos beta so this will be negative this will be positive right just revert that so it's going to be negative of cos alpha so this can be rewritten as n squared plus d squared positive 2 times n into d into cos alpha this is b squared now if you were to compare compare 3 with 5 what do you see you got cos alpha you got 2 you got d but you don't have m you don't have n over here you don't have m over here so what I wish to do I would like to take 3 and then I will multiply it with n and I will take 5 I multiply it with m and add them both add them both so 3 implies this is going to be n into c squared is equal to n into m squared plus n into d squared negative 2 m and d cos alpha now you take this 5 you multiply by m so 5 is equal to m into b squared is equal to m n squared m d squared plus 2 m n d cos alpha so you add them both this gets cancelled so what do you get you would be getting n c squared plus m b squared is equal to n m squared plus n d squared plus m n squared plus m d squared let me take d squared let me club these two things so if I were to take d squared out I would get m plus n okay and then plus m m uh, n m squared and m n squared so I would take n and m out so that would give me a m plus n right that's fine now what is m plus n just go back over here m plus n this is m this is n now what did I tell you this entire length is a unit so just substitute that so this is going to be equal to n m a plus d squared of m plus n is a right so this is equal to if you want you can give an acronym so m is there a is there n is there so you can write m a n man plus a d squared you can have that on the left hand side it's going to be I start with m b squared plus n into c squared so this is the formula this is the formula that we have got now how this formula would help us in fact using this formula you can get the value of d I, I was just telling you how to obtain the length of the line segment right this is the line segment this is the line segment how to obtain the value of d so what you can do is from here you can revert this formula so I can push this to the other side so this is going to be m b squared plus n c squared negative m a n is equal to a d squared so bring the a down so this is m b squared plus n c squared negative m a n divided by a is equal to d squared you want only d so this is going to be root of m b squared plus n c squared negative m a n divided by root of a right so root is over there and root is over here and this is root of a this is equal to d 
So if you want, you can rewrite this as a fashion root of mb squared plus nc squared negative m into a into n divided by a. So this is the value of d. So what is d? d is nothing but ad. ad is just a line that is drawn from the vertex a to the side bc. So this is altogether a different formula and this is called as Stewart's theorem or Stewart's formula. You can name it any way you want. Thank you everybody. I will show you how to apply this in the next class. Okay everybody, let's do this question. We have this triangle. We are expected to find AD. So let me draw this triangle. We got A, B, C and AD is line drawn from the vertex A to the side B. So this is given as A units, this is 16 units, this is 15 and this is 22. And we are expected to find AD. What is the length of this. So I'm taking it as D. Now we know a formula by Stewart's formula. Let me write this. We know that. What is the formula? It's MB squared plus NC squared is equal to A times D squared plus MAN. This is the formula. Of course you can take the value of D from here. So applying the formula, what is M? This is my M. This is my N. So write down the data. This side is A, right? This entire side is A. So if I were to write the data, I would get A, the entire side is 24, M is 16, N is 8. This is going to be C, this is going to be B. So B is equal to 22, C is equal to 15. So M is 16, my B squared is 22, my N is 8, my C squared is 15, my A is 24, my D squared is not known, my M is 16, my A is 24, my N is 8. I'm taking in all the information from the data I've just placed in here. So 22 squared, I have to multiply. That would be 2 to the 4, 2 to the 4, 2 to the 4, 4, 8, 4, right? So this is 4, 8, 4. So 16 times 4, 8, 4. 15 squared is 225. So 8 into 225 is equal to 24 d squared plus 16 times 24. Let me use this place. 24 into 16. So 24, 2, 12, 13, 14, and a 4, and a 2, and a 4, 8, 3, 8, 4, times 8. So let me just write this first. 8 times 3, 8, 4. Now you need to multiply these two things. So 4, 8, 4 times 16, 6, 4, so 24, 2, 48, 55, 24, 29. And then you got a 4, and a an 8, and a 4, 4, 4, and a 3 and a 4, you get 7. So this is going to be 7744. 7744 plus 8 5 is a 44, 8 is a 16, 22, 8 is a 16, 18. So I add here 1800, zero, zero, I get a 4, I get a 4, I get a 15, and 8, 9. So this is 9544. Four is 24d squared and then 8 4s are 32 3 8 8s are 64 67 6 8 3s are 24 and a 30 so i bring this down 3072 is equal to 24d squared so i get a 9544 i subtract 3072 i get a 2 i get a 7 i get a 4 i get a 6 right so let me check again six five four okay so 24 d squared is equal to six four seven two i'm not sure if 24 is going to divide but let me try so 24 two times two twos two fours are eight 
48, 10. I get a 6, I get a 1, 7, 3. Yeah, 6 goes here. 6 goes are 24, 2. 6 2s are 12, 13, 14. And then I get a 3. I thought we would be able to divide, but apparently we are not able to get that root. So d squared is equal to 6, 4, 7, 2 divided by 24. This is what we have got. So what I will do, I will see if, yeah, 2 divides here 2 times, uh, 12 times. This is going to be 3 and a 2 and a 3 and a 6, right? 3, 2 and a 6 and I've got, so 2 divides here 6 times, 2 divides here 1 and 6 times, 2 divides 1, 8 times, 18 and 2 divides here 3 times, 2 divides here 8 times, 0 times, 9 times. So 809 divided by 3 can, so d squared is equal to 809 divided by 3. This is what we have got. I think we will have to settle with that. So therefore d is equal to square root of 809 divided by 3 units. This is the value of d. If you want you can use a calculator but I think I will just keep the value of d as it is. So d is equal to root of 809 divided by 3 units. So that is the length of the line segment which we have done using the Stewart's theorem. Thank you.